Whoa, 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 why does this happen? Okay, so my chapter is 24 and I'm doing section 5 and my section is on migration and non-random mating and how it affects um, genotype frequencies in a population. Go, go, go. What? They froze. So I'm going to start off by talking about bidirectional mating. Oh, sorry. Whoa. <laughs> migration. <laughs> and <laughs> migration is basically when um, a small group of individuals moves to a new location and in this case breeds with um, the individuals there. And this breeding, this migration, and then I'm breeding of different alleles creates a completely new, well not completely new, but it does definitely change allele frequencies. So, the, basically the movement of individuals between populations changes allele frequencies because um, if the group migrating has different or new alleles, and they breed with the population, the new larger population that was there before them. Um, obviously, they're introducing new alleles or the introducing more alleles, and they're changing the allele frequencies. Wow. Okay. What? So gene flow is known as the movement of alleles into or out of a population. And this occurs with populations with different allele frequencies, which is basically what I just said. But for a term, like, this is a vocab word in the book, so you should know that the movement of alleles into or out of population is known as gene flow. And you can kind of think of it as, like, genes, like, <laughs> this is going to sound really stupid, but kind of like, I'm doing some hand motion right now that you can't see, but, like, moving into a new population and then back out and then yeah like just never mind just know this definition <laughs> that didn't work out as I planned uh, this picture it definitely shows uh, bidirectional migration and bidirectional migration is um, when the alleles move oh my bad I'm so sorry when individuals move in both directions so it's not like just one population is going to one side or one population is going to the other side it's it's going in both directions so here you see that the pop that population 2 has blue alleles I'm gonna call them blue alleles and population 1 has red alleles population 1 with the red alleles is the western deer and the blue population population 2 is the eastern deer so these um, individuals originally had, like, population two originally had, say, like, all blue alleles. Population one had all red alleles. And then now, after migration occurs at this point in time, um, the allele frequency in population two for the blue alleles has gone down since they lost some alleles and the population for the red oh, in population 2 also the red allele frequency went up because now you've introduced red alleles and there was more than there were before considering there were none <laughs> and the opposite occurred in population 1 where after the migration occurred um, they lost two red alleles and now there's less red alleles to um, be passed on. So that allele frequency went down. And in the blue alleles, that allele frequency went up because now you introduced the blue alleles to this population. And there's a greater chance that, um, that when individuals breed that they will get a blue allele because now the blue allele frequency went up in, that, in this population. Um, bidirectional mating has two different, uh, two main effects. Uh, the first one is that it reduces differences 
and allele frequencies between neighboring popula uh, populations. So now instead of being radically different after migration occurs and changes the allele frequencies between the two populations, um, they are more alike. So like in my previous example here, you see instead of being all red or all blue, now there's um now they're closer to being to having uh equal it's not it's definitely not quite equal but they definitely share more um alleles or have closer to the same frequency of alleles than they did before right because like if this migration keeps occurring then soon they'll have like almost similar frequencies of each allele or more similar than they did before when they had no um, like none of the same frequencies of alleles at all. I'm going backward, just kidding. Uh, the second main effect is that it increases genetic diversity. So, like the previous example again, um, instead of just like because if a population is um, isolated for a long period of time, then they will eventually have like a certain set of characteristics and this set of characteristics or alleles um not mixed with the other gener like other populations um it'll be like since they all have the same it'll be pr relatively uniform and after migration occurs you see introduction of new alleles and this causes or creates genetic diversity within a population because now you have different alleles instead of having just uniform alleles. So now you're mixing in different um, traits and stuff. It's pretty awesome. Yep. <laughs> so a good example of genetic diversity would probably be um, like not all of us have the same hair color. Like some people are blonde, some people are have brown hair, some people have red hair, or like even with eye color, there's a lot of diversity in that. So instead of everyone, well, you also see a lot in cultures that like certain cultures have similar traits or characteristics. Like I know Chinese people, a lot of them have brown eyes. I've never met a Chinese person with blue eyes. Um, but um, if you mix populations, like say, uh, people from China with brown eyes <laughs> migrated to um, a place with blue eyes and they bred and mated and stuff and all that awesomeness and um, eventually that um, in that population with blue eyes you'll see an increasing um, amount of people with brown eyes and um, so this migration as you can tell uh, created some increased genetic diversity and yep that's how it increases genetic diversity uh, now I'm gonna move on to non-random mating non-random mating is basically when individuals choose their mates based on genotypes or phenotypes so instead of just randomly mating with someone you would uh, be selecting them. So your mate would go through some sort of selection process. So whether it be because you have, like, you really like, okay, say, I I'm not saying this is true, but uh, say I really like people with blue eyes. Right? So everybody with like I'd be more attracted to people with blue eyes and this is me being attracted to the something in their phenotype right because um, they're expressing a gene for blue eyes and I'm being attracted to that so obviously I'm just not randomly mating with someone like it's not like I see somebody and I'm like yeah yo tonight let's mate or something like that uh, there's gonna be some type of selection process that they have to go through um, and this happens not just with humans like it happens with 
in nature too, like say like all the intersexual, I think that's what Catherine talked about. Yeah, intersexual traits or intersexualness stuff where um, peacocks with bigger and brighter and colorful feathers will be more likely to mate with females or guppies with prettier colors or uh, deers and stuff with larger antlers, all those things. So yeah, basically that's what non-random mating is. Okay, so non-random mating will affect the relative proportion of homozygotes uh, and heterozygotes in a population depending. Assortative mating is when individuals with similar phenotypes are more likely to mate. This is actually known as positive assortative mating, but your book, or our book rather, <laughs> doesn't really specify positive and negative. They kind of just define it as that. Uh, but yes, positive sort of mating is when individuals with similar phenotypes are more likely to mate. And if this similar, or if these similar phenotypes are due to similar genotypes, this will lead, oh wow, I need a space there, eventually lead to an increase in homology because you are increasing the chances that there will be that specific trait. So if, back to the blue eyed example, if, oh wait, I don't have blue eyes, just kidding. Okay, let's do another example. So short, <laughs> let's do short and tall, right? So for all of you guys who are not aware, I am very short. <laughs> so say I'm attracted to people who are also short. Um, if this is because we have um, an allele or some type of similar gene thing or whatever that um, that causes us to be short. So say it's S, like little s. And little s um, causes you to be short. And I have it, and the person I'm attracted to has it. If we mate, um, there's a greater chance that our kid will also have this little s short trait. And this and this eventually leads to homology because you have more, you have a greater chance of getting the same alleles or genes or traits. And yeah, whoa, okay. <laughs> so, negative assortative mating, if you're curious, um, is when individuals with dissimilar phenotypes are more likely to mate. And if this, if these dissimilar phenotypes are due to dissimil ah, dissimilar genotypes, this would lead to an increase of heterozygy. And this increase of heterozygy um, creates more genetic diversity, and etc. Uh, but yeah, and let's move on to inbreeding. Okay, so inbreeding is when... Um, inbreeding is actually an, a really extreme form of sort of mating because it's when you mate with people with really similar or pretty more similar genetic uh, makeup as you because you're sharing one or more common ancestors so this a choice in a mate with similar genetic history um, as you is known as inbreeding and this is more likely to take place in a small population because excuse me I had to burp <laughs> uh, this is more likely to occur because um, uh, because oh gosh I just lost my train of thought oh it's more likely to occur because there are, is a greater chance that you would choose somebody that is related to you and a smaller chance that you'll choose somebody that's not. So like say there's three people, oh just kidding, that's a really small population. Say there's ten people and one person, uh, like there's a greater chance that somebody out of those ten people will be related to you, right? Yeah. Um, that actually happened here. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. Okay, so I'll start a new video.
and it'll be really short, but it'll be on non-in-a-mating and in-breeding stuff. Okay, bye! <laughs>